Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is managing machine connectivity permissions in Power Automate. Let's go. Now let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So in a previous episode, it was a few weeks ago, we discovered how we can configure machine connectivity and found out that it was quite straightforward. This is that new feature in Power Automate Desktop that means you don't have to use an on-premise data gateway anymore in order to communicate from your cloud flow to your desktop flow. It's built into Power Automate Desktop itself. Now, what happens when you do use this feature is that by default, the environment maker role includes the ability to register a machine. It also provides you the ability to go ahead and update the configuration, share it, etc. Basically, you are an owner of that specific functionality and as a result you can go ahead and sort of do um, pretty much administrative like privileges against it. For some organizations they want to control who can go ahead and use a machine versus who can go ahead and manage one and really that's sort of the core differences here. Now Microsoft has provided three additional roles out of the box that do provide organizations with more governance controls. So you can choose whether or not you want someone to be able to manage a machine, whether you want them to be able to just use the machine, or lastly, do you want them to be able to use the machine plus share that machine with others? And those are the three different modes. And we're gonna go ahead and dive deep into this topic in this video. So as we discussed on the previous slide, we talked about how environment makers, which is essentially like a standard role that allows someone to build flows and power apps when they have that role to be able to also go ahead and manage machines and that's the default behavior now in the microsoft documentation they talk about how you can modify this default role if you want to limit what people can do um, you know with respect to machines and so what you're going to see is when you look at the default environment maker role you're going to see that there's a green or essentially the, well, not green, but the yellow sort of single slice of pizza for each of these related permissions, basically giving it access to its own machines, the ability to create, to read, to share, etc. And so what I've done here is in order to make this all work is removed those permissions from this environment maker role, because what we'll do is remove those permissions from the environment maker role and then assign these other out of box roles to our users based upon their access needs that they do require for their scenario. Now, these are the three out of box security roles that have been added now. We have desktop flows machine owner and you can think of this as almost like, you know, an administrative type permission where we can register machine, run desktop flows, share a machine, share a machine group, add to a machine group, etc. So that's kind of the, the full permissions that an admin would typically have. Then we've got the desktop flows machine user, which would be the least privileges. This would allow us to go ahead and use a machine and to be able to execute a desktop flow on that machine, but we're not able to do anything in addition to that. And then we also have the desktop flows machine user can share. So really the ability to go ahead and use a machine, but then also share that with other people. As So those are the, the three roles that do exist. Now, for the purposes of this demo, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to have the environment maker role provided to this user so they can go ahead and create flows, etc. Now, as I mentioned on the previous slide, I'm going to leverage this modified environment maker role. So I'm going to remove all of those other default permissions. And we are going to rely upon this other out of box role to grant this user with permission to go ahead and use a machine that has been shared with them. And so that's what we're gonna rely upon in this specific demo. So let's go ahead, let's run a demo and we'll see exactly what this experience looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna use two accounts as part of this demonstration. So one is actually gonna be an admin persona that just happens to be a user called Lydia. And then I've got the regular user account, which is just gonna be Kent. So right now 
I am logged in as the admin. As mentioned, I've gone ahead and updated the environment maker role. I've removed the machine related permissions from this specific role itself. Then what has happened, I've got my Kent user and as a result, I've gone ahead and added the desktop flows machine user privilege to that account. And then I've continued to use the environment maker account, which is naturally um, has been updated, as I mentioned on the previous slide itself. Okay, now if we go ahead and take a look at machines, once again, logged in as my admin user, I do have this machine here called machine one that has been registered and it is currently not shared with anyone. So that represents the machine that Kent will be using. Uh, however, Kent currently does not have access to this machine in order to go ahead to run any sort of desktop flows on it. So what I've done here is I've got a VM. I'm going to now log in as Kent. And as you can see here, uh, Kent doesn't have any sort of access to any machine. So this is naturally the flow maker portal. I'm in my dev environment. I don't see any machines. Similarly, if I log into Power Automate Desktop, I click on settings, click on machine, and it says that I do not have any sort of permissions to sort of edit the machine settings itself. And so that is as expected because I only have the ability to go ahead and use a machine that someone has shared with me. So let's go ahead and I'll close this down and we're gonna go ahead and now share a machine with the Kent user in order for him to be able to go use. So now I am once again logged in as my admin user. I'm gonna go ahead and manage access for this specific machine, I will go ahead and find Kent. And there's the Kent account. I'll click on it and say he can go ahead and use it. Now let's go ahead and save this setting. And now he does have access to go use this. So once again, let's flip back over to the VM as Kent and see what has changed inside of Power Automate Desktop. Okay, so back in the VM and let's go ahead, let's open up Power Automate Desktop. And what we should see if we head over to settings and then machine, and then let's go ahead and refresh that this machine is registered and that in this case, because we're logged in as Kent, we only have run only permissions on this machine. We can't go ahead and make any changes, but naturally we can go ahead and use it. And so for organizations that want to have administrators responsible for installing and configuring and registering the machines, you can go ahead and do so. And then what you do is you then share with the related users that should have access to that specific machine and just give them the ability to go ahead and use it, not make any modifications. And in some circumstances, if you did want to allow them to use and to share, you could also go ahead and set that permission as well. But in this use case, all I'm doing is gonna go ahead and say, Kent can go ahead and use it. Now, if we head back over to the Power Automate Maker portal and we refresh machines, we should now see this one show up inside of our profile. And we can see that Lydia is the owner of it, but I do have user access, so I can go ahead I could create a connection and then go ahead and use this specific machine itself. So that concludes the demo. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it is one of those things where, you know, every organization is different. Everyone's going to have different ways of thinking about this, but it is good that you do have control and you can choose to configure your access in whatever lines aligns best to your organization's principles and standards. So, that's it. All right, so thanks for going ahead and checking out this video, very much appreciated. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Naturally, you're on YouTube already, so you found the channel, but why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, go ahead, like this post, go ahead, provide feedback, comments, always appreciate it. Once again, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week on the channel. Have a great week, bye.